Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan and in this video I want to give you tips on how to choose the perfect photo book or photo book specs for your multi book or series photo book projects. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so and make sure to check the notification bell to never miss a new video. It's hard enough to find a photo book for a one-off occasion that you're really happy with in this plethora of choice that we have now but when you're creating a series of photo books, for example, when you want to create a series of travel books from your previous holidays or yearbooks for every single year of your family photos or similar projects, it's very difficult to find the perfect book that's going to be the greatest choice for the entire series, that's not going to rob the bank, that's going to satisfy all your demands and wishes for your photo books. Of course, if you don't care about consistency, this is not such a difficult choice, but if you want all of your books in your series to look the same and carry on with the same consistency of quality, size, format, and look, then you really have to make a lot of decisions right at the very start of your project. I got into this dilemma a long, long time ago. If you don't know who I am, the photo book guru, I've got hundreds of photo books from many, many different companies. I travel a lot and I started making photo books to kind of document my travels around the world. That was my primary goal. And of course, throughout the years, I tested so many photo books. I've done some of my travels in one type of book, some of my travels in another type of book. But in the past couple of years, I decided to start making an entire series of all my travels, a very consistent look throughout the series and almost like volume one, two, three, four, and so on until I die. And to, to make that kind of decision was very hard and I kept going back and forth and I couldn't decide or settle on one photo book company or photo book format and I ended up making so many photo books that I'm not actually using anymore because I just couldn't decide on what to use. By that I mean that I decided on one photo book type, I made four volumes and then I realized that I don't like it so much because of one reason or another and then I decided on a different format and I started making it from the beginning again and I've done this four or five times so now I've got like seven books from five different series which are the same photos the same travel but different format and the reason why I'm making this video is to help you not get into the same mistake as I got into and to help you uh, make that decision to filter down all the available options and see what's really important to you when deciding on the specs of your photo book series. It's a lot of money if you have a lot of books in the series and a lot of time and effort to edit the books. So it's really important to know what you want right from the start. So obviously this video is not about what I decided on for my own photo books, but I will show you what I finally decided on. But I'm going to tell you how I got to that decision and how you can get to the same decision. What are the main categories or things to think about before you settle on one certain photo book type? So this is my photo book series now that I settled on and I'm going to stick with it, whatever happens. And as you can see, I've got some bits here. I've got a Southeast Asia, I've got a Panama and I've got a Japan book here. And I'm gonna show you now how the book looks so you can have an idea of why I settled on this. So these books are A4 landscape. They have a linen cover and all of them have a different color just you know for variety and to add a bit of color to my shelves which are white. And they have a partial dust jacket which is added onto the cover. So there's nothing on the actual cover but the title and the photo is printed on the dust jacket. Now, when I put these on the shelf, I of course have uh, spine tags because you couldn't have a volume without spine tags. How would you know which book is which? And when I open the book, as you can see, it doesn't open fully flat, but it opens fairly flat. And I accounted for this in my design. So I have a very wide margin at the gutter to make sure nothing gets lost. Now, I will show you this book now in detail from a close-up angle so you can actually see it. I'm going to talk through now the most important categories or points where you have to make a decision and then I tell you how I got to my own 
photobook spec. Hope that makes sense. So there are five things that you have to decide on before you start creating a series of books. One is the price. Second is the quality of the print and the book in general. Three is the format or the size and heaviness of the paper. Four is the availability and five is the importance of consistency to you. So let's start with the first one, the price. Obviously it's the most important category because if you're going to make 20 or 50 books in this series, the final total can go up to sky high. And yes, most of you are not going to make 100 books in your series, but if you travel a lot, then you might end up making 20, 30 or even 40 books in your series. If you want family albums at the end of the year, like, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022, then, you know, over 40 years, that's going to be 40 very long books. So money is very important. And this is going to be a bit compromise, like deciding between the quality and the price, like how much can you compromise to bring down the quality or the uniqueness of the book to make it affordable in the long run. Again, if it's a one-off book, it doesn't really matter how much it costs. If it's a wedding album, because it's a one-off occasion, it's a special occasion and you can kind of, you know, fork it out. But if you have to fork out that amount of money once every single year, or maybe two, three times every single year, in my case, because I travel quite a lot, then it is a lot of money. So that's number one thing to look at when you check all your options, try to in your head kind of multiply that by the amount of books that you plan to make and see if you will be able to afford that in the long run. Number two is quality. And quality of course is very important when it comes to photography. And again, this is something to compromise on depending on your photos, depending on the intention of these books and depending on the money that you are willing to spend on it. So when I talk about quality, I don't just mean the actual quality of the print, but the quality of the book. So do you want a nice uh, linen cover book, which is going to last much longer than a paper cover book, a soft cover book, for example, or do you want something with very thin pages and press printed, or do you want best quality fine art print in your book, or maybe silver halide true photographic printing in your photo books? If you have very good quality photos, you take them with a DSLR camera, photography is your passion, then obviously quality is going to really matter to you, whatever the purpose of these books are, because you put a lot of effort into taking your photos. So of course you want to see that kind of quality in print when it's in your hands. But if you take thousands of pictures every single day of I don't know, your baby running out onto the street for the first time and they're all taken with your phone, then a press printed book might be a better choice for that because you won't see too much of a difference between the two prints, especially if your phone doesn't take the best photos or if you don't really care about framing so much and color balance and color correction and all of that. And that can really, really reduce the price of your album if you go for press printing instead of silver halide or inkjet printing, fine art printing, which is the most expensive of the three. So deciding on the quality, depending on your intentions and the way you took your photos, and second, deciding on the paper, the cover and all of those, how much is it going to matter to you? Do you just want to see your photos or do you want these book to, to be something that you can be proud of, something that makes your shelves nicer instead of just putting, you know, an everyday kind of um, thin book onto your shelf. Number three is the format. This is one of the most important things that can go wrong, especially if a photo book company goes out of business. So deciding on the format is very important because your photos will have to fit into that format throughout the whole series. You can't really make a series where one book is landscape, the next one is portrait, the next one is square, one of them is two inches bigger, one of them is one inch smaller. It's just not going to look like a series when you put it onto your shelves because there's a lot of inconsistency in the size. The thickness obviously doesn't matter because certain books can be thicker, uh, have more pages in them, but as long as the height and the 
the actual format of the cover is the same, then your books are going to look nice and consistent. Deciding on a format is quite difficult because if you make a very large book and some years you have a lot of photos to put into that, but some years it's going to be a 20 page book, then a really large, um, I don't know, 14 by 14 or 12 by 12 inch book with 20 pages is quite a waste because it's going to be very thin and the cover is going to take most of the space and it would be much easier to actually put that into a smaller book on more pages and it would look better as a book. That's why I decided on something smaller because I can make it longer if I need to, but even if I have less pages in it, it doesn't look so awkward as a giant book with 20 pages. However, if you're making a yearbook once a year at the end of the year and you want to put 365 days worth of pictures into that book then the biggest format is going to give you the most space that you can work with in this series. A second thing to think about when, when I talk about the format is not just the size of the book but the thickness of the pages. Flush mount albums or lay flat albums can get very very bulky. This book here is only 60 pages and you can see how thick it is and it's really heavy and this was one of the main reasons why I decided on something non lay flat and with thinner pages. If I'm going to have 50 books and put them all on the shelf and they all weigh like six seven pounds then the shelf might collapse for example if it's not a really sturdy wood but also if you have to move house which I have done a couple of years ago the heaviest things I had to move were my photo books. I had like 200 books that I had to move. They were all weighing a ton and bringing up those boxes, putting them onto cars and bag is very heavy. So again, these things you might not think about when you create a photo book, but when you have 40 or 50 photo books in a series, the heaviness of the book and the size of the book is really going to matter because it's going to make a big difference on how much you can fit onto the shelf, how heavy it's going to be on the shelf and how easy it is going to be to move. Number four is availability. Now this is again a big big issue. If you don't make photo books yourself but want to choose a company to make the books for you and for example this happened many times before when my publisher and Apple went out of business. I don't mean Apple as in the company but their photo book section they stopped doing that then I was getting emails every single day and messages on YouTube asking me what other photo book can I use that's going to be the same size and the same format as Apple used to be or my publisher. So imagine you go through an entire process of choosing the best photo book for your series, you make the first six books and then the company goes out of business and you have to choose something else. And if you're lucky enough, you can find a company that has the same format, roughly the same quality and same paper, but what if it's not going to be exactly the same and then the purpose of your series is again going to fall apart and you have to start from the beginning. So when it comes to availability, you really have to think about the company that you trust with this long-term project with. Are, do you think they're going to be in business for a long time? Is it a huge company like Blurb or Mixbook? Or is it a very small kind of niche company that just recently popped up on the market? It's really important because some of the smaller companies might not make it after five years. If in competition, the bigger companies stake over their market share, they might make it through. But when you think in the long run and you want to make books for 20 years that all look the same, you really have to choose a company that you think is going to stay in business for that long or you at least have to pick a book type or a format that is available from multiple sources so if that company goes out of business you'll have at least another option. And again this is only really important when you care about consistency. I know many people who don't care about consistency, they like to have their travel books all different, like they have an Africa book which is huge and then they have a small day trip to Paris which is going to be a much smaller book. And you know if your photo books don't all look the same then none of this really matters but if you want a consistent looking series all of these things really make a big difference. 
Number five is consistency, which kind of sums up all of what I was talking about, how important it is to you to have your books all the same. Do you want them to be completely identical, the same font inside, the same layout, the same spine text, the same cover, the same picture on the front, you know, in the same frame? Or do you want to give yourself a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of variety, like I did, when I can change the color of the book just to add a little bit of color to my shelves because I like these linens. And you know, that also means that if I can't find this linen color anymore, at least if I have to choose a different one, it's not going to look so out of place because all, all of them are a different color. But if I decided to go with this linen color for all my books, then what if this linen color is not available anymore and I have to choose another one? So, you know, all of these small things that really matter to my OCD brain. And the reason why I decided to use this kind of um, dust jacket is because I can take it off and if I want to redo the cover for all my books, all I need to do is to add another dust jacket instead of reprinting the books. So again, that helps to keep the consistency at a much lower cost. Now, then I got to the end of my five categories. Let me talk about my books and how I decided on this format. So I'm going to start paging the book now so you can see what it looks inside. And basically my biggest worry was that I choose a company and the company might go out of business and I can't carry on with the same format. Now, of course, I've been making photo books myself for quite a long time. I've made flush mount books, I've made lay flat books, and I've made perfect bound books. So I kind of have some experience. I'm not going to say I'm a professional bookmaker, but I do have a lot of experience with making books and you learn through your mistakes. So if you want to start making your own books, you have to kind of give yourself um, a little bit of headroom and some money for waste because it's quite a long learning curve and you're going to waste a few books in the process. That's just part of the learning process. But once you get through that, then you can fairly confidently create these books without any issues. One thing, obviously, I looked through so many companies, I tried to find a format. First, I wanted to make them square. As you can see, the South America was square. And then I started making portrait books because I was doing the stitched method where you stitch the photo book into signatures and in order to do that you have to create an A3 sheet folded into two which is an A4 portrait. So I started making portrait books because I can't print any bigger than A3. Then I finally realized that I don't want to do any stitching so that's how I decided on the A4 because it's the easiest. I don't have to trim it before printing. I just buy a stack of A4 papers and I put it into my printer, print it out double-sided and I bind it. It's the easiest way to do it. It's extremely easy to source A4 uh, photo paper for inkjet and laser, any kind of printer. And it is also cheaper than buying A3 for the same size. So that's how I decided on the format. The second thing was the binding type. I really love lay flat and I've been doing lay flat books for a long time, but as I showed you, my lay flat books are so heavy and they are so expensive and I don't want to personally make my own lay flat books because they're very time consuming if you don't have machinery for it, if you do it manually. But if I, if I ask a photo book company, to make a lay flat book for me is going to be very thick pages, it's going to be very expensive, and I'm not prepared to pay 180 pounds for a good quality lay flat book if I want to make 50 of them within the next five to 10 years. So lay flat was out of the question, and also, as I said, it's going to take up way too much space and it's way too heavy. Flush mount is obviously out of the question because these are not wedding albums, these are travel books, and also, for me, a travel book is more like a book as opposed to a photo album. I put a lot of text into them, a lot of stories, and I add itinerary pages, I add maps, I made them more like a travel, more like a Lonely Planet book instead of a photo album. So a book look is going to be much more beneficial for me than an actual photo album look. When it comes to paper and printing, this was the hardest thing for me to decide. I didn't really want to print my own books because ink is very expensive and things can go wrong and it's time consuming and you have to bind it. 
but in the end I decided I do not want any of my books to be press printed because I do take a lot of photos with my camera, I want nice colours in these books and I do care about colour correction and I edit my photos quite a lot so I want to be able to see those colours when they are printed. So the two options were silver halide or inkjet. The problem with silver halide is that it does not exist in non lay flat books. You can only get silver halide in lay flat books and the pages are going to be very thick and text doesn't usually look very good on silver halide because it's, it's kind of a traditional photograph printing method so it's not really designed for travel books, it's designed for photographs. So in the end I decided to go with the inkjet book but there are only so many companies who make inkjet photo books and my favorite one of them, Mpix, is only shipping in the US and also is quite expensive. So for me to get Mpix books, I would need to pay the same amount as I paid for the book just to get it shipped from the US to the UK. And it's really not worth it. So why would I pay $160 for a book and then pay another $100 to get it shipped to me? So that's, that was the kind of turning point when I decided that I have to make these books myself. So I got a fairly good inkjet printer. It's not the most professional like the Canon Prograph 1000 or, or any of those uh, 9, 10, 12 color uh, printers, but it's good enough and I can get a very good quality inkjet print, which is much better than my silver halide books. It has very nice clarity. It has very good color balance after some correction and uh, calibration. So this was basically the story of how I decided to make my own photo books. The, the book that I finally decided on is fairly thin and the cost is quite low compared to any other option that was on the table for me. I can make uh, an, an 80, 100 page book in this style from around 50 pounds considering the price of the ink, the price of the paper and the price of the cover. Of course I don't calculate in my labour cost because it's a labour of love, I love making books, but if I wanted to make the same 100 page book with an inkjet print with a very good company that I trust, it would be well above 100 pounds so I can make the book myself at half the price and it gives me something to do, it's a hobby and I don't need to make them every single day, maybe two, three times a year once I catch up with the past 20 years of travels and as I said it's going to be much much more affordable in the long run and whatever happens, whatever company goes out of business, I will always be able to make these books because it's a matte paper that I chose inside, of course it's matte paper because it's a book and it's very easy to source matte papers from different multiple sources and they all kind of look the same. I can always source grey board, I can always get an inkjet printer and I can always get a linen cover. So these things will be available for the next 20-30 years, you know, unless the world comes to an end. Um, it's very easy to substitute if one of my suppliers fails to uh, sell me the things that I'm, I'm buying from them and it is, as I said, something very fun to do for me. Of course, not all of you will want to make photo books. If you do want to make your own photo books, I have a lot of tutorials on my channel and I plan to upload a lot more this year for book binding and making your own photo books. But if you decide to go with a company, make sure that it's a company that you can trust that it's going to be there for many years to come. It's an affordable price in the long run it gives you the best kind of compromise between price and quality and it's also fairly easy to edit so you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours making one single book. So that's the end of this very long video. I hope I managed to give you some tips throughout my experience on how I picked the best photo book specs for my own series and I'm very excited to see the entire series on my shelf. I love these books and now I can finally get on and do them without going back and starting it all over from the start. If you have any more questions about the things I discussed in this video, leave them in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.